right. So basically, um, lack of fit. Okay, we'll start off from the introduction. I'll pictorially uh, explain you what it is. Um, so lack of fit determines whether a specific type of regression function adequately fits the data. What do you mean by adequacy? Whether it's a good fit, right? Um, so this is actually going with the linearity when we talk about simple linear regression. Um, most probably this occurs when uh, we have multiple observations for a single next level. So we are going to discuss that. Lack of fit test requires repeat observation at one or more X levels. So there should be repeated observations. We'll um, discuss with an example. So we assume that the observations are independent, normality assumption of the error term, constant variance of the error. So basically this one, all the assumptions that we had in normal error regression applies here. Right. Only difference is actually it's not a difference. Uh, it's how the data occur for a given next level. You have multiple um, observations, y values. So lack of fit may occur. So a lack of fit test requires if we have uh, to come across instances like that. Uh, okay. Before this one, I'll just. Um, simply explain what this lack of it is um, so that it would be clearer. It's very easy. It's not a hard thing. Um, okay, usually, let's say our, um, we have sort of a function, okay? with the shape something like this. But even for this, uh, when we talk about simple linear regression, it should go uh, a curvy linear shape, but it's simple linear regression. So we tend to fit a line something like this. Okay, this is the y axis, this is the x axis, right? So this in this sort of a thing, right? Uh, we require to check lack of it given that uh, there are multiple observations in a single single x level. Okay, it can be one or many, <laughs> right? So lack of fit means it lack it lacks the fit to the true model. So that is what it really means. So if I just draw one particular x level in the other picture, just to uh, give you some idea about the notation that we are going to use, right? Uh, so we have to have two indicators, i and j, let's say i and j, because at the j x level, we can have i many different observations, right? That's what we are talking about basically. If it's not clear, just interrupt me and ask. So let's say we have uh, five observations at a given x level, something like this. Right, and this is our let's say our fitted regression uh, line goes somewhere like this. Okay, so there are other observations here, here, right? So for this considered x level, the regression line goes like this. Let's I just plotted only one a single x level. Okay, right. Uh, it can be even on top. I just, okay, um, just to be specific, let me draw, just assume I drew this particular thing, okay, this, right, this particular thing here, so it goes below the line, but it has several observations, so that it gives this line, okay, this is the vertical axis, this is the horizontal axis. So this is the J at X level, right? Um, okay, it's Y, this is X, okay? <coughs> so this is the J at X level, XJ, 
X1, X2, XJ likewise. Um, and we have five observations. So corresponding Y values are denoted as, I denote it here, right? Y, I, one, Y, um, I, um, sorry, Y, other way around. Y1, J, Y2, J, Y3, J, Y4, J, Y5, J. Okay, so this is the first uh, response in this level. This is the second response in this level. Likewise, let's say you have five observations here, right? And there is a mean for these five observations at this level. Right, so I'll give it in another color. So seemingly the mean lies somewhere here, right? So let's say the mean of these things lie here. So we'll denote it as y bar j, mean of j level. It's easy, right? The notation is very easy. First observation of the j level, second observation of the j level. Likewise, when we take the average, when we take the simple average, the mean, the mean of the jth level, right? That is the notation. So when we draw a line like this to the jth level, what is the fitted value? Where is the fitted value? It is lying definitely on the fitted line. This is the fitted value, right? These are true values, right? We don't have a single true value here. That's why we talk about lack of fit. Right, we don't have a single true value here. Uh, for instance, we have five true values here for a given X level. That is the sample behavior of the sample. But whatever it is, this is this should be the fitted value because in the given X level, this is the point which lies on the fitted line, right? So this one is the fitted value. Fitted value of this. So for the moment, if we consider this observation as the true value for the moment, okay? You have to consider each and everything individually. Just for demonstration, assume that this is the true value. If that is the case, if this is the true value, what is the error that you have from here to here? That's the full error. If this is the true value, if this is the fitted value, the full error is what? This particular length. That is the full error that we have in the, if we consider this to be the true observation for the moment. All these are true observations, but we are taking one at a time, right? So if that is the case, so when that comes, you have to forget about all these individual observations, right? You keep the mean value, you keep the observation, you keep the fitted value, and that's it, right? So the gap between <coughs> the mean the uh, level, um, the mean of this level and the true observation is given a name, right? You call it PO error. Purely that is the error. Because we expect our line to go through, the, uh, through this line, right? To, through this point. That is what we discussed at the very first day. Usually our regression line should go covering all the means of each level. But it has not happened. Why? Because it possesses some lack of fit. That is why. Because of the shape. If you try to fit a line to a curve, these things happen. Right? So for this part you call, it's the PO error. If 
we we expect our line to go along this but it doesn't go so purely usually what is the error the gap between the fitted value and the true value that is what you call the error <coughs> squared sum of error we get sse right so here we expect this line to go from here in that case the error should be the gap between these two we give it another name called po error purely that's the error if this line goes here because the true line should go from the because if we draw the true line right it should go it should definitely pass this uh point it should that is how the regression is constructed this is a this is not a linear regression but we have mistakenly fitted a linear regression line okay so if this is the case if this is the true model po error should be the gap between the true value and the expected fitted value right so that is how you give the name the rest part is called the lack of fit lof lack of fit right po error you um can put it like this so lack of fit is basically the gap between uh the fitted value of the line and uh the mean value of the level of the considered level so basically you are getting the lack of fit error when you subtract po error from the full error so that is when we consider this observation to be true if we consider this observation to be true the mean is anyway constant you have to forget about all the other observations and you can mark the full error po error and the lack of fit okay so lack of fit occurs when we have multiple observations at a given x level is that clear any problems you can ask if you have any problems because this is going to be the base uh, for today's lecture if you don't understand this you won't be able to understand anything of today's lecture so anyone uh, if you um, want me to explain this once again uh, let me know right now and if you have any doubts please ask any confusions you can ask <coughs> you can take a screenshot of this uh to be familiar with the notation uh so it's there's nothing to you know by heart if you uh, just try to go with this notation so uh the formulas given in the slides are compatible with this but anyway to fill up an anova table i recommend you not to go with the formulas it's okay to go with the formulas formulas are correct nothing wrong with that uh but it's time consuming it's better if you can uh, anyway you are doing the same mechanism if you even if you look at the formula or not but you know by in practice try to uh, practice and get that it's time saving right even for this one this is the breakdown of error just like we broke down total to uh, regression and error total sums of squares is equal to what total sums of uh, sums of squares of regression plus sums of squares of error sse plus ssr is equal to ssto right just like that we are breaking down sse again to two parts that is sum of squares of lack of fit sums of squares of po error same thing same thing repeatedly happening right same concept uh, nothing new uh the only thing uh, that you have to learn is this uh, occurrence and these technical terms and how to fill the anova table again it's going to be the same thing and you are going to uh, check a new hypothesis same f test same thing right uh so it's going to be very easy if you understand this at this point so assuming that you all have uh, no doubts and move forward <coughs> so as a motivation example i uh, took 
something new for today. A certain commercial bank um, announced that it would offer gifts for account holders who open um, new money market accounts. Minimum initial deposit in the new money market account was specified to qualify for a gift, right? So they have to uh, maintain some minimum amount of deposit, right? <coughs> a researcher wanted to identify the relationship between the minimum deposits, so that is an amount, right? And the number of accounts opened. So when, when there's a refer to a draw, what do we try to do, right? We um, try to uh, enhance our chances, right? If it is a, you know, um, let's say uh, you're selling tickets for some events and if there's a raffle draw, you try to buy as many tickets as possible. So you can increase uh, the winning probability, right? So the more accounts, the more number of new uh, money market accounts that the uh, depositors have, there's more chance of winning the gift and they have to maintain some minimum deposit as well, right? So um, the following table uh, has the results. So our sample size is what, 11. They have uh, come up with 11 branches of the particular commercial bank, right? So here's the size of the minimum deposit in do dollars. So it's the amount, right? And number of new accounts. So in this branch, they have to maintain a minimum deposit of $125. And the number of uh, new account holders is 160. So likewise, they have, just because this slide is not enough to put it right down like that, I have split it into two parts. Uh, so same thing repeated here, just the data points, okay? So we have 11 data points in this. <coughs> so sample size is 11. And this is our X and this is our Y. Same thing. Right, so for this, the following figure shows the scatter plot. So when there's X, when there's Y, and as long as they are quantitative, you can draw a scatter plot. This. So when you draw the scatter plot, it shows you something like this. Just by looking at the plot, we just have a feeling, okay, um, a simple linear regression line might not fit this because it shows some uh, non-linearity, right? Uh, but, you know, we can check that with model diagnostics that we discussed last time. But here, can you see repeated observations? So, uh, it's better to go for a, a model adequacy test as well. So we can detect these things. <coughs> If the model is not at not adequate, we cannot be using that, right? This is not coming under model diagnostics, but whenever we observe repeated observation at the same X level, what do you want? Sorry. Um, when you whenever you can see the repeated observations at the same X level, you have to go for a lack of test, <coughs> right? Um, so what do you mean by repeated observation? You have different, different observation in same Excel. For example, 125, it's yeah, repeated. So to the hundred, uh, to the X level of 125, we have two different measures, right? When we take 100, see it's repeated. We have 112 and 136 observation on top of each other. See, if you take 100, we have 112 and 136. That is what you call repeated observation, right? <coughs> so if we have one or more repeated observations, we are anyway going for a lack of fit test as well. We just don't end up with the usual ANOVA that we discussed before last week. Okay. Um, Plot suggests linear regression function is inappropriate, but that is the plot, okay? At this level, you cannot say anything before doing a hypothesis test. Why? Because this is done for the sample. What if we collect another sample and what if we get a linear 
um, what if we get something linear, right? So just by looking at the plot, you cannot say anything. We cannot deal uh, with the sample. We have to go for the population generalization. That's why we go for ANOVA, hypothesis testing and all that. But the plot gives us some, uh, <coughs> you know, um, some warning, uh, some signal on this. It gives some signal, but this thing uh, might not be significantly inappropriate sometimes. It seems to be inappropriate, but when we do the test, we might get the results that, th that this model can be used for this. If that is the case, it's fine. Right? If that is the case, it's fine. So if we disregard lack of fit, they have given this is the annual table that we are going to get. So they have disregarded lack of fit. And in the usual way, uh, they have computed the sums of scars of total, sums of scars of regression. They have gotten the uh, difference between these two and filled this one. We have 11 uh, observations in the sample. So the degrees of freedom is 11 minus 1, that is 10. We have just one x variable, so the degrees of freedom is one. You are going to get 10 minus one here. We learned all these before, just before last week. So this divided by this comes here. This divided by this comes here. And we don't put anything here, which I told you, if you put something here, you're going to lose marks because there's nothing called mean square total, right? And F ratio is the ratio between these two numerator denominator. This is the F value, the calculated F value, which we are going to uh, compare with the critical F value. So this is the degrees of free, numerator degrees of freedom and the denominator degrees of freedom of the F value. And we compare the two values and check whether our it's not is rejected or not. So here in this type of an ANOVA table, <coughs> what will be our it's not? The model is significant. We check whether our beta 1 is existing or not. Beta 1 is equal to 0 or not. That is what we are checking here. Yeah. But as long as they have given repeated observation, what they say is just checking this is not enough because there could exist lack of fit. Lack of fit means basically the line that we fitted is highly deviating from the true model expected to since uh, f19 this is 5.12 we conclude that there is no linear relationship between x and y uh, for the uh, for five percent level of significance right so this is read from the table <coughs> and these two are compared we reject it's not if uh, this one is greater than this value if this is in the rejection region, we reject H0. But here we have to accept H0. That means beta 1 is equal to 0. That means there's no linear relationship between the two variables. But this is still problematic. Why? This conclusion is improper. There is a definite relationship, uh, but the relationship is not linear. Actually, this is the case. By checking this hypothesis, what we get is there's no significant relationship between the two. As long as we are dealing with linear regression, how we interpret is there's no significant linear relationship between the two, which implies that there's no relationship between the two variables. But actually, when looking at the plot, can you see there's some sort of a relationship between the two? There could be, right? It shows some sort of a relationship. So this is misinterpreted. This interpretation is improper when there exists lack of fit, right? That is why this is the motivation to go for a lack of fit test. It's just the matter of partitioning the error term. Okay, and we are going to have another F ratio, right? Uh, to the partitioned uh, terms and same test is performed. And we are going to check whether uh, the model is adequate enough, right? Adequate enough means the model is well fitted, whether it is good enough. 
properly fitted okay <coughs> just uh, go with this word this is some sort of a technical word uh, model adequacy remember the spellings uh, it's, it's just an english word but um, it's better using that word in hypothesis um, where did we find that <coughs> This one. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Notation. So let these denote the different x levels. Right. Uh, Xj values. X1, X2, up to Xc. Right. Uh, so Xj is coming in between. Nj is the number of replicates means what repeated values it's a statistical term given to repeated values. It's, it's english but uh, usually in statistics we use this replicates repeated things and j is the number of replicates for j level of x so in that whiteboard example how many replicates did we have one two three four and five we had five replicates five repeated observations for this x level Right. <coughs> uh, okay. Total number of observations n is basically given by this. Right. We have to add up all the repeated replicates and add all the levels together. Right. This is what the notation says. So j goes from one to c. And yij is the observed value of the response variable for the i replicate of the j level of x. When we consider the j level of x, there are i number of repetitions, right? So xij, yij is the observed value, which we checked one at a time, right? Uh, for the response variable for the i replicate. So here we discussed about the first replicate, x1j. Basically, these are xij's true values right here we considered x1 j when i is equal to one this is the first replicate this is the second replicate likewise so data arranged by replicate number and minimum deposit when you uh, same data given here i showed you some there were some repeated stuff this one is repeated I think everything is repeated besides this one. Yeah, 75 is repeated, 125 is again repeated. Everything is repeated, repeated except this one, right? So they have, uh, so there's no time dependency in regression. So we can uh, randomly pick these things here and there. There's no order, right? Um, so they have rearranged the data set. Uh, <clears throat> with uh, replicates so when x1 is equal to when x is equal to 75 these are the values 28 and 42 when x is 75 the response is 28 and 42 right likewise when it is 100 it's 120 112 and 136 So when it is 100, observations are 112 and 136. So likewise, they have rearranged the data set. When it is 150, there was only one observation. So this is blank. It doesn't have a second replicate. It doesn't have any replicate for the fourth text level. That's what it means, right? Uh, so they have rearranged the table like this and they have taken the mean. So 28 plus 42 divided by 2 is 35. 112 plus 136 divided by 2 is 124. Likewise, they have taken the mean. Remember here, we don't take 152 plus 0 divided by 2. No, we are not doing that because it is not replicated. 
okay when getting the mean if we have one observation just take it as, as it is if we have three replicates here add all three divide it by three right uh, you don't have to divide it by the same number just like in other cases in here okay just look at the column how many observations do you have sum it up and divide it by number of observations that you have in that level so here 152 divided by 1 it's 152 likewise <clears throat> these two adding up divided by 2 simpler simply you can construct this table so this is the full model why ij is equal to mu j plus error so basically the mu j is the true mean of that level <coughs> right this is the full model uh, of this test mu ij's are parameters the true mean j goes from one to see this mean response when uh, this is the mean response when x is equal to xj at the considered x level. Y bar j was the sample mean. Mu j was the population mean. We, we don't know that. It is a population parameter that is unknown. This is the sample mean. They are talking about mu j. So mu j can be equal to this or it can be different. We don't know. But it should be somewhere lying here in this level. It doesn't have to be even among these population mean we don't know right we have just grabbed the sample and in that sample we had five observations what if we have six observations this y budget changes right what if we have only two observations again this y budget changes it comes between these two right so y budget changes according to the sample that we collect it's different from person to person this is highly subjective but mu j is the population parameter, which is a constant. It's a constant value. It doesn't fluctuate because it does not have any relationship with the sample. But there is, there exists a true value in this world. Although we don't know, although we have not seen to this scenarios given x level, right? So that is what they're talking about. These, these are independent error terms. So expected value of this is this. This is sort of the estimate, right? Given for uh, the particular parameter. This parameter could be estimated by using this expected value of yij is what? Right? Basically, y bar, we expect our y bar, yj bar to be equal to this. It doesn't have to, right? Um, Okay, <clears throat> PO error sum of scars. So what is the PO error? The gap between uh, the sample mean and the considered observation. So it is. it can be shown uh, that the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameter mu j in the full model one, <coughs> simply the sample means by bar j, this one happens. SSE for the full model is, so SSE F means the full model. You don't have to put F. That's fine because it's the same thing, same SSE, the same way you compute, right? Um, so that's why I said uh, don't worry about the formula as long as you have to uh, get the annotable, usual annotable. Because in annotable, we, what we practice first to get the total sums of scars, get the regression sums of scars, and uh, we subtract those two and get the error, right? So that's you know th this is another way of getting the error, but you should get the same answer. Right? So don't buy hard the formulas, just go with the um, <clears throat> usual way. This is applied maths. So it's important to know the formula. You go under each observation at each x level. So that is what this iteration means, right? You take the gap between each and every observation in a given x level. So for the first x level. You go with, let's say you have five replicates, you go, you check the squared gap between the mean for the first x level and for all the five uh, things one at a time. <clears throat> Plus, you go to the next x level, you take this gap and square it. These gaps and square it. 
right so same thing you are getting the error this is called a uh, po error sum of scars and is denoted by sspe right uh, so usually uh, sse f is denoted by sspe right so this is the first partition of sse sse is just computing you have to compute sse um just in the normal way right so here you are again computing sort of an error but we gave it a name what po error sums of scars same thing right same way you have to get the gap you surely go with this notation uh, because this is sort of confusing sometimes you might forget to write this f so better going with this when you are dealing with the unknown table some of us has a po error <clears throat> and the degrees of freedom uh, associated with sspe is this one in minus c and is denoted by this doesn't matter just refer the unknown table so it should have some particular degrees of freedom and number of observation c number of replicates so in minus c we have free right we are we free in number of c in minus c number of things so for the bank example this is the computed sspe it's easy right what have they done 28 minus 35 squared plus 42 minus 35 squared. So 35 is the mean of these two. So this block is written by using this particular column. This minus this squared plus this minus this squared plus. Hundred twelve minus hundred twenty four squared plus hundred thirty six minus hundred twenty four squared. So likewise, you have to go with everything. So here, as we don't have any replicates, hundred fifty two minus hundred fifty. So that 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 is zero. You don't have, even have to write it, <coughs> right? So only for the things that you have replicates, only um, you have to compute the PO error. Although you put this term, it doesn't make any. change right so basically how you compute the po error is you take each and every observation in the given next level you take the uh, gap between the computed mean and that observation one at a time square it sum it right see the next one is so we talked about this block and then the other block 112 minus 124 square plus Hundred and thirty-six minus hundred and twenty-four squared. Let's see whether we have that as the next two terms. See, hundred and twelve minus hundred and twenty-four squared plus hundred and thirty-six minus hundred and twenty-four squared. So that is for the hundred and twenty-four block, the second block, right? So can you see um, even uh, hundred yeah hundred One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We had eleven observations, so we have eleven things. So even this one, one hundred fifty-two minus one hundred fifty-two squared. So we had just one replicate. One, one thing we don't even call it a replicate. Uh, so this is zero, right? So when you compute this, you are getting thousand one hundred forty-eight. You can compute it at home. So this is the PLS of the stars. Uh, mm, okay. <clears throat> right. If you don't understand how you uh, got this, please ask now. Even in the chat room, you can drop uh, a text. That's fine. I'm taking it time to time. <clears throat> reduced model. The reduced model is the model fitted for the data, assuming that it is in the that that is appropriate. That means, um, uh, in this example, we expected our model to be um, a non-linear shape, but we fitted a linear model. We fitted this line, 
uh, assuming that it is appropriate, assuming that it is suitable, right? For the bank example, the fitted, fitted linear model is this. It has given in terms of uh, betas, the notation, and the hypothesis is this. So you can say linear model is good versus linear model is not good. What does it mean? If the linear model is good, the expected value of yi should be equal to this. The model should really exist without the error <coughs> because expected value of error is zero, right? So that becomes zero when you take the expected value both both sides. Expected value of beta naught is beta naught. Expected value of this one is beta one like side. You take the constant term out. Expected plus expected value of epsilon i is zero. So you have this. If this really exists, that means the model, the linear model is good for the data. We don't care whether the data is linear or nonlinear or whatever it is. Our it's not is this. So if it is not appropriate, we say this is this. So you don't have to put arrows and these things, right? Either you write this one or this one. Or you can go with this one or this one. And I like it if you write, it's not, model is adequate. It's one, model is not adequate. So that is uh, some other thing you can write. So you can either write only this. These two don't put arrows. Uh, what I say is this thing implies this one. So you know hypothesis can uh, either be written in terms of notations or by English words. That is fine. So simply you can write it's not linear model is good. So when you are writing uh, theoretically, it's nicer to use the word adequate. So you can write it's not model is adequate. It's one model is not adequate. Anyway, you have to talk about this linearity. <coughs> that is what we are saying. The reduced model under it's not is this one. Uh, the SSE for the reduced model, so this one, SSE for this is the same thing, right? It's just the way that we calculated the errors. It's not the sort of a uh, formula, right? Another way, but same thing, right? How did we get uh, the length? So this is basically the lack of it. Um, this is how you uh, get for the reduced model. So. Uh, it's time saving if you can find SSE and SSPE and take the uh, difference. Then you should be getting this one. This is the lack of fit error. Right? So the degree of freedom is this. Okay. Uh, so don't panic. I know this is uh, very seems to be very rigorous but it's not it's really easy so basically this is the difference between uh, the reduced model so you call it the partial f test basically the f test right it's a f test okay <clears throat> so this is the test statistic and this is how it is distributed right basically the distribution you put the numerator degrees of freedom here, denominator degrees of freedom here. Now don't panic with this notation, it's really easy, right? For the numerator, anyway, how did how do you compute f mean squares something divided by mean squares something? Right? That is how you, you just get the division of mean squares. So how do you get the mean square? Sum of squares, something divided by degrees of freedom will give you mean squares. In error, in, in ANOVA, right? Um, how do you get the mean squares? This divided by this. Sums of squares divided by degrees of freedom will give you mean squares. Sums of squares divided by degrees of freedom, mean squares. So when you take the ratio between these two, you are getting the F. Same thing here given in some rigorous looking notation. It's not rigorous actually. Uh, if you look closer, this is very easy. So 
S S E R. I told you to write it as this S S E, right? I'm sorry. This was not the um, lack of it. This is the S S E. Okay. Um, so uh, this is S S E. This is S S P E. Some the full model is this. Some of us for the re reduced model is basically the S S E. I uh, mistakenly said that I remember lack of it error for this. No, this is not the lack of it. Okay. How you compute lack of it is getting uh, the gap between this one and uh, the full model. That is what they have given here. S S E same thing. S S E R is equal to S S E. Same. Just the notation given to denote that it is a reduced model, right? SSEF means what? Some of scars of error of the full model. So uh, that is basically the pure error sum of scars. When you get the gap between these two only, you are getting the sum of scars of lack of fit, right? And divided by the corresponding degree of freedom gap. Here, again, you have the full model, sum of scars of pure error divided by this. So it follows this distribution. Right, I know this is when you look at this, you are uh, thinking whether you have to memorize this. No, not at all. Just forget about this. This is just to make these slides complete. And part, I won't ask you to write the test. Okay, write the uh, formula of the test statistic of partial left test. I don't ask questions like that. But I want to, to know how to compute it. Right? So to compute, you don't have to know these locations. Right? So here, basically, some such class of lack of it is given by the gap between these two. This is equal to this, right? You know, right? Full error is equal to addition of these two. No? In the whiteboard, we did it. Full error is equal to addition of lack of it plus PO error. So even when you take the sums of scars of all these, sums of scars of full error is again equal to sums of scars of lack of it plus sum of Class of PO error. So, some such class of lack of it is equal to the gap between these two. Very easy. It's partitioning of errors. So, if this is the case, instead of this term, you can put SSLF, some such class of lack of it, divided by when you do this thing, you definitely be getting the degrees of freedom of lack of it. Okay. It has to here SSP divided by the corresponding degrees of freedom. So this is the degrees of freedom of lack of fit sum of scars. This is the degree of freedom of uh, pure sum of scars. Right? Easy. This is the final formula. So when you uh, divide uh, sum of scars by the corresponding degrees of freedom, what do you get? The mean scars. This is lack of fit. This is lack of. When you divide the sums of scars by the corresponding degrees of freedom, you are getting the mean scars. This is PO error. This is PO error. I'm just, why am I uh, telling you these things like this? I know because you would hate this subject if you tend to uh, buy hard these things. You don't have to, right? You really don't have to. You don't have to know these formulas. I want you all to know how to compute this. That's it. <clears throat> For that, you don't want to have formulas. Just keep the idea of how you compute those using the ANOVA. That's the easiest way. Right. So this is equal to this. We call the lack of it sums of scars. <coughs> Further, this is the lack of it means scars. And this is the P O error means scars. If there's any problem, just let me know in the chat room. At least, or else, please unmute and speak up. Okay, next one. Bank example. Activity. Check whether there is evidence for lack of fit for bank example at 5% level of significance. Now, this is very easy. Why? Because they have already computed and given us the annual table and PRI. PO error sums of scars. So, I'll do this with you. I know you all never uh, would try to attend this alone with my prior experience. So let me do this with you, right? 
uh, if you like, you can try it alone. That's fine. So I am just referring to the annotable that they give. So to compute, uh, to check this hypothesis, first I want to have it's one and it's not. Let write, let's write it step by step. What is our it's not? I told you I'm, I like it if you write model is adequate. Or you can either write expected value of i is equal to this versus it's not equal to beta naught plus beta one xi. You can write like that even. <coughs> or you can write linear model is good, linear model is not good, right? Uh, so I like to write it like this way. Anyway, is correct. If this is for model adequacy, this is for inadequacy. Model is you can either write inadequate or not adequate. Opposites. Okay. So they have already given us an ANOVA table, right? So I'm not going to copy that down here. In that ANOVA table, so what I know is sums of squares of lack of fit is equal to sums of squares of error minus sums of squares of your error. I know this. But from that diagram, I know the full error is equal to lack of fit plus. PO error. We discussed this now from that diagram. So full error is basically this one. So this minus this will give you the lack of fit. Okay. Even when you take the sum of stars. Uh, so in that ANOVA table, they have computed and given us SSD. <clears throat> I'll show you all. You're not in a hurry. Uh, Here, error is this one. So what we are doing is partitioning this error into lack of it and PO error. That's what we basically do, right? So what is this? 14,741.6. This is the SSE, right? And also to find SSLF, I need to compute SSPE, that is some source of PO error. That is also computed for us. Somewhere here, yes, it's given to us. So it's just a matter of taking the difference. Fourteen seven four one five six minus 1.148. As these are sums of scars, definitely it should be positive, right? So this will give us, just check my computations. I quickly computed this just before the lecture, right? Okay. And I want to know the degrees of freedom of this, right? Degrees of freedom of lack of fit. I want to know that. So basically that is, C minus two, right? So what is C? Number of repeated X levels. J goes from one to C now. So how many XJs do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six X, XJs. If that means, um, six different x values, six different x values. We have 11 in the sample, but six different x values when we take this one into account. <coughs> so c is equal to six. So six minus two is four. Uh, also, we need to have degrees of freedom of PO error. That is n minus c. 
11 minus 6 is equal to 5. Right? So, what is the F statistic? Just quickly sketch the ANOVA. This is the error. Error is divided into lack of fit and PO error. Go in this order, then it's easy to get the F ratio. Right? If you switch these two, uh, you have to again switch the numerator and denominator because you are dividing lack of fit sums of mean scores by PO error mean scores. Right? So go in this order. Right? So it has the corresponding degrees of freedom. Right? So in lack of fit, what is the degrees of freedom? Four. In PO error, what is the degrees of freedom? Five. Right? <coughs> In lack of it, what is the thumbs of stars? This one. Uh, one, three, five, nine, three point six. I'm sorry for the space. And for the PO error, what is the thumbs of stars? One, one, four, eight. So how do you take the means class? This is the thumbs of stars. Right? So how do you take the means class? This thing divided by this. This thing divided by this, right? So means class is basically, I write it down, right? So mean square lack of fit is what? Uh, 13593.6 and divided by four, right? Mean square PO error is what? 1148 divided by 5. <coughs> Don't divide and put here because we are going to, you know, uh, at once compute it. Otherwise, you will be getting uh, decimal issues, right? Just have it like this because anyway, you are going to use a scientific calculator for this. So, F ratio is basically what this divided by this, right? So, for F, you can put one three five nine three point six. So you don't have to depend on formulas. Lack of fit divided by PO error. What means guys? So put this into the calculator and you will be getting something. I, I got this. Please check the answer. I got this. So this is my calculated value. Now I have to check the critical value, F critical. Why? Because I'm going to compare this value with the critical value. So that is F. What is the numerator degrees of freedom? The degrees of freedom that is in the numerator of this. Denominator is what? This. Basically this and this. Okay. Four, five. My alpha is 0 0.05. Why? In the question, they have told us to check model adequacy <coughs> to 5% level of significance. So you read this from the table. So I'm not going to show how to read it. You all know it already. Uh, I read the value as uh, 5.19. You read it from the table. Statistical table. Okay. People who know R can get it from the software. But just get used to the table also because in this course at the final exam, you should refer to the table. So don't forget that. And just as in a normal hypothesis test, I'm going to write the decision rule. Reject H naught. If, <coughs> so this is an F test now. Sketch it and get. This is the rejection reason. This is the critical value. If our calculated value falls somewhere here, we reject it's not, right? So if you put the notation that you use here, if you put F star, put F star here, don't confuse, right? If the calculated value is greater than the critical value, put whatever the notation you put here, if it is F star, put F star here. <coughs> you have to properly write the decision rule. You are getting marks for this. Easy. Decision is what? What is our F? 14.8. What is our critical value? 
5.919. So this is correct. Which means what? We reject H naught with 5% level of significance. It's better to write H naught is rejected with 5% level of significance. Don't write it like this, that the level of significance, right? <coughs> And the conclusion is, you have to keep it in plain language. Conclusions, right? If we rejected H naught, um, that means we accept H what? Model is not adequate. Although we fitted a regression line, can you see with the repeated observation, it's important to do a lack of fit because otherwise what we get is the model is not significant. Usually what we get is if we do not check for lack of fit from the usual annual table, we get that, okay, these two variables, the X and Y variables don't have a relationship, but that is not true. That is very improper. No, It has a relationship, but the thing is it's not linear. That was the problem. So it could be checked when there exist repeated observations at each level. So for this sort of a case, if you uh, uh, properly construct a complete ANOVA table with the error partitioning and all that, you can do both the tests. First, you can check whether the model is <coughs> significant or not, right? Then if not, you can check for model adequacy as well, but to check this, you have to have repeated observations. So there could be instances where you do not have repeated observations. Like for the same interval, you don't have multiple observations. Then you can't do this. You have to go with the usual and what table and check for model significance. And if it is non-linear or anything, you will get, uh, there's no relationship. And that's all what you have to do. So what if your scatter plot is something like this, you don't have repeated observations, but still you have a plot like this and you fit a line like this, then your H naught will be accepted, right? Not this H naught. This, is, this will be accepted if this is the case, right? And when you do a diagnostic, model diagnostic, you will find the uh, error variance is different. You will find the non-linearity, all that, right? You will find this. So if you, only if you have repeated observations for the same X level, you can perform lack of fit test as well. You can uh, test both the things. Is this clear? Did I do it too fast or did I repeat it the same thing again or what? Please uh, give me some comment, at least in the chat room so that I can be happy about what I delivered. <clears throat> it's okay to say, no, you didn't understand, that's fine. I just want to know. I'll give you some time to write this down. Uh, anything that you don't understand, you can ask now. I'll give you a few minutes.
okay, we did this and we checked um, whether uh, there is any evidence for lack of fit for the bank example at 5% level of significance. What did we get? The model is not adequate. We saw it in the beginning, right? Uh, anyway, for this example, I purposely gave you uh, <coughs> inadequate model. Uh, but, you know, by looking at this scatter plot, you cannot initially uh, exactly say it. But we just get some sort of a signal that this could have some in inadequacy, <coughs> right? So true model should go somewhere like this, or even it could be varied from the given thing. So we have to trust our data points at the first place, right? We have to trust our samples. And based on the samples, we are making inferences about the population. So based on this sample, we just see, right? This cannot be fitted a line, but there could be instances where this is acceptable. As long as you can predict well, as long as the error is very small, uh, sometimes when you take the total error, it could be very small and uh, this shape could be negligible sometimes. So in that case, although you see a scatter plot like this, you will uh, get like, okay, uh, the relationship is linear or something like that. <coughs> but if you don't have this observation here, Right, yeah, you, the slope gets slightly down and you will get a line, not a straight line, actually. So a line like this. But if you don't have this observation and say you don't have even this observation, then I think most of the time the, the slope would change, but the line would be okay, right? So it really depends on the observations that we have because we see a pattern because of the observations that we have. Uh, but anyway, not because of this curvy linear pattern, right? We are doing the lack of fit test only if there is at least one repeated observation. Okay, if you plot the thing and you see some curve shape, don't go for lack of fit, even though you do that, your PO error would be zero. Right, because zero plus zero plus zero. So it's not going to work anyway. <clears throat> if the PO error is zero, uh, your F ratio is, when, um, you know, it's going to infinity, it's undefined, right? When the PO error is zero. So don't do that when you have just a single observation for one level. When you have at least one multiple observation, uh, we can go with this. <coughs> mm. Right. Um, so just to practice, we'll do the upright breakage example as well. I'll give you time for that. I want you to come up with answers. Because I did something with y'all now, you're going to do the same thing again to a different data set. So you can't say that you don't understand. You can say you don't understand, but you could have said earlier. Right, okay, fine. So according to the uh, about discussion, SSE can be partitioned into fewer sums of scars and lack of it sums of scars. <clears throat> To identify this um, by notation, so this is how it's uh, given, lack of fit deviation. So this is the same thing that we discussed in the sketch, uh, which I um, drew initially, right? With five data points I uh, sketched and showed you, right? So error, Total error deviation is what considered i observation at the given x level minus the fitted observation at that given x level. This is the SSE, right? Just the SSE. PO error is what? The considered true observation minus the sample mean of that x level. Very easy. Lack of fit is what? Gap between the sample mean and the fitted value of that x level. So 
at this course what i expect you to is uh, to know how to calculate these things i don't want you all to uh, by heart these notations or anything but you know having this notation is not hard when you draw pictures this is beautiful right you always have to draw pictures and get things into head it's easy you don't have to study your time is saved right <clears throat> so this implies that uh so there is sort of a proof when you go from here to here because you can't square each term individually at the first place you have to square the whole lot but when you take cross products they become zero and uh you end up getting this you square and take the summations from uh the first observation to the zth observation um, uh, from first level to the seventh level you have c different x levels right okay <coughs> and then uh, basically this is the annotated bar right so don't worry this is nothing complicated you have just forget about this block forget about that block if this block did not exist this is the familiar and what here about you right the f ratio is not given but this is basically the, just forget about this right you have the source of variation as regression residual and total so this is the uh column for sums of stars degrees of freedom mean squares and f if it's not given here there's no space to give it so what we discussed so far is partitioning of errors we have another block the total does not change the regression does not change nothing this particular error is partitioned into two for example if this is 4 if this is 3 this is going to be 1 so there's nothing going to happen for the total right this 3 plus 1 will give you 4 just for an example right even when you add these two degrees of freedom you are getting n minus 2 c minus 2 plus n plus c n n minus c will give you n minus 2 right even these two should give you this one <coughs> so you have just separate sum of stars for each and every these things and uh, when it comes to the complete annotated table you have to have a column for f as well how did you compute f for the usual thing if you don't have these things regression mean square divided by error and you put the f value here here what are you going to do you are you are going to have another f value for the for the other hypothesis test that is lack of fit mean square divided by p o error mean square. so that f value could be placed here so you have two f values in this table that's it initially you had this f value ratio between these two here right here you have this one plus you have another f value this one divided by this one that's what we did in the example so to get this completely into head for example let's say uh, for exam i'll give you to complete an annotable sort of right i give you spaces i give you blanks and i want you to complete so you also know to construct the full annotable in that case right for air fried breakage example revisit the air fried breakage example and determine whether or not there is lack of fit of a regression function so you have you don't have to um, compute the annotated table from scratch uh, so why because um, before a couple of uh, lecture sessions we constructed an annotated table for this example right so you just have that construction just include these two rows that's all what i want you to do right just copy the annotated table with some space here compute these two anyway you don't have to compute both these even right it's just a matter of computing one of these let's say you compute at po error so how do you compute ssl just take the gap between this one and this one right you don't have to compute anything so i'll show you the data set on the screen so that you can 
compute the PO error. Basically, if you want, you can compute the lack of fit error. That's fine. But don't go to compute both these. It's a waste of time, right? Because you know this already. So you have constructed an ANOVA table before, uh, before a couple of lectures. Just include this block. And I'm, I want you to do the same test that we discussed a couple of minutes back, right? The lack of fit. Uh, and I want you to determine whether the air fried breakage example um, in that the model that we fitted is adequate or not. I want you to check model adequacy to 5% level of significance. I'll do the answer with you, but I'll give you, uh, it's just a matter of computing this, right? 10 minutes for this, right? I'll show you the um, data set here. Um, you can copy the ANOVA table and do the tests. Um, and once you come up with, uh, I, and I want you to rearrange the data as well, then it's easy for you to capture, right? So I think 10 minutes is enough. 10 minutes is enough just to calculate these things. Right, start now. I'll um, show you the thing. <clears throat> Was it from lecture two? Oh, it's okay. Here it is. Yeah, this is the data set. Oh, um, I'll show you like this. This is the data set. So for this, can you see repeated? Observations one, 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 repeated three times. Zero, 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 repeated four times. Two, two, repeated two times. Three is uh, not repeated. Yeah, so anyway, we have more than one repeated observation. Uh, so you can, you have to really check for model adequacy. So get the PO error. And just construct and what is do the test for this. If you have questions, you can ask. Yeah. So um, I'll just clean this up. Or, yeah, this one. <clears throat> First, uh, you have to uh, rearrange the data. Uh, so these are xj's that we have so what are the values that uh, that we have under x 0 1 2 and 3 okay so when x is 0 when x is 0 we had Four observations 9, 12, 8, and 11. Right? We had four replicates 9, 12, 8, 11. When x is 0, we had 9, 12, 8, 11. Right, so when x is 1, we have 16, 13, 15. We have just three replicates there. 
15, sorry, 16, 16, 13, 15. We don't have a fourth replicate, right? Similarly, when x is equal to 2, we have 17, 19. When x is equal to two, uh, 3, we didn't have repeated observations, just a single observation. So actually, if we take replicates, right? So this is the first replicate, second replicate, third and fourth. Maximum number of replicates that we have in our sample is four. Just check we have, whether we have 10 observations, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, because that is the sample size. Then we have to get the uh, mean of these column wise. So nine plus 12 plus eight plus 11, divided by four, that is 10. 16, 13, 15 divided by three, that is this. Just check my computations, okay? This one plus this one, because you didn't uh, give any answer. So please do this alone and check my computations. How do you do this? This plus this, 17 plus 19 divided by Two, 36 divided by 2 is 80. Here, 22 divided by 1. It's just 22. Okay, so these are the means. These are the observations. What is the value of C? Okay, we'll keep it. C means what? Number of. So J goes from 1 to C, right? So in here, J goes from 1 to Three, so value value of C is what? Three. Sorry, four. Zero to. So if it is one to C, we have zero to this one. So we have uh, three Num number of these, right? So here actually J goes from zero to uh, the last value. So what we have is. 0, 1, 2, 3. It's not the this value, right? So the first place, actually J goes from 1 to C. Here, the value of uh, these is 0, 1, 2, 3, right? You, you can't put dots there, actually. So 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is the Cth value. Cth value is the fourth value. Right? So C is equal to 4. One, two, three, four. How many X levels that you have? One, two, three, four. Right? It doesn't have to be zero, one, two, three all the time. Okay, C is equal to four. Just keep it aside. We are going to need that in the animal table. So our task is to compute SSPE. How do you compute that? Starting from here, nine minus 10 squared plus 12 minus 10. Squared plus eight minus ten squared plus eleven minus ten squared plus. So this first block is done. Now the second block, sixteen minus this one, right? Uh, don't put decimals in the middle because when it comes to the final answer, there could be differences. So keep the decimals, uh, keep the fractions as it is. It's advisable to do it like that. Plus. 13 minus 44 minus uh, divided by 3. Likewise, 17 minus 18 squared plus. Likewise, up to 22 minus 22 squared. This one, this one. Okay. <coughs> so what I got as the answer was this. Please check it. Uh, I'll just keep it for the first decimal place. It's this, right? Approximately equal to this. So SSPE is this. So in the ANOVA table, earlier we computed SSTO, SSC, and SSR, all that we computed. So the value of SSE is 17.6. Just check it. This was there, right? So hence SSLF. Some class of lack of fit is what? 
SSE minus, you don't have to compute this again, right? Just take the gap. Uh, P over. So it is actually 17.6 minus 16.7. This will give you 0 0.9. So this is what I got. Just check my computations. If this is wrong, the whole lot is going to be wrong. I checked it, but there could be slips. So when you are doing it, do it alone and see this is the method. Right? So without cleaning this, you can take a screenshot. This is important. Um, I'll just go to the next page without cleaning this up. So I asked you to construct the ANOVA table first. We constructed our ANOVA table earlier, right? Source of variation, sums of scars, degrees of freedom, mean squares, and the F, F ratio, right? So we had regression, error, I'll keep a gap here and put the total, right? So this one was 160. I'm referring to the computations that we did earlier, a couple of lecture sessions back. Error was 17.6, that is SSE. Total was this one. Degrees of freedom, this was one, this was eight. Sample size was 10, so this is 9. Means that this divided by this, 160. This divided by this, 2.2. <coughs> we don't put anything here, <coughs> right? F ratio for the hypothesis test of checking whether the model is significant, this divided by this. That gave you this one. So what did we learn in today's lecture? Partitioning of errors. So we partition this one. I told you to go in this order, lack of fit error and PO error. So you computed these two, right? What was the PO error that you computed uh, previously? PO error sums of class first. This one, 16.7. Write it in the correct place, otherwise you are in trouble. Okay. Lack of fit also, that is basically this one minus this one will give you this. We computed that as well. Write it in another color. Is this too hard for you? Okay. So next. The degrees of freedom, n minus c. Just remember one of these, n minus c. So what is the degrees of freedom? I'll write n minus c here. We all to remember. So n is what? 10 minus c is what? 4. Actually, you don't have to write the competition. Just write 6 here. Because here we have showed that. C is 4, so the degrees of freedom in minus C is um, 10 minus 4, that is 6. Okay. Uh, it's there. If this is 6, what is this? Do you have to remember that this is C minus 2? No, right? Just take this one minus this one because this is the partitioning of errors. Because when you add these things up, you should get the error. So if you know one, you should know the other one. So this is eight minus six. You can take it like that. Even though you take C minus two, C is what? Four. Four minus two is again two. Right? So you don't have to remember all these things. Just remember a couple of things. Then the mean squares. How do you get the mean squares? This one divided by this one will give you 0.45. This one divided by this one will give you 2.78. And what is our new F ratio? This one divided by this one. So that is 0 0.1619. 
just the same way that we took this one, right? The, the ratio of these two will come here, ratio of these two in this order, like copy it over the order. That was the partial left test. It is this, right? What is the critical level, critical value of it? F critical is what? So this is the, we are checking this one with F critical. This is for model significance. This is for model adequacy. Why? Because this is the lack of fit. This is the regression over error. This is the sig this is for the significance. This is for the lack of fit, model adequacy, right? If you are given this table and asked you to check for model adequacy, you have to refer to this F. If you are given this table and asked you to check for uh, model significance, you have to refer to this F. Very easy. Only we added these two columns just because we had repeated observations. So how, how do you compute F critical? So we go along this line. This is the numerator degrees of freedom. This is the denominator, right? F two six. We are checking it with respect to five percent of level of significance. So here I read this from the table. That was 5.14 something, right? This is the annotable. I asked you to compute. Only addition was this line and this line. Everything else we computed earlier. I asked you to add, add these two lines. That's it. <coughs> Just take a screenshot so that we can move ahead. But keeping this is not enough. Now you have to write the hypothesis, write the decision rule, make the decision, and then the conclusion, right? We just make the decision here itself. It's easy for you to make the decision by the graph, right? So here, this is the rejection region. This is the critical value. The value that we decide, okay, after this one, we reject. Okay, so this is, 5.14, check whether this value falls somewhere here. No, right? We do not reject it. So this is 0. Point something. It falls somewhere here. So we do not reject it. So what is our it's not? It's not is what? Model is adequate. It's one is what? Model is inadequate. Or you can write. Uh, there's a good linear fit, or you can write in terms of expected value of i, i, anything which is given in the slide. Inadequate means not adequate, right? Uh, so here, I'll just take the next page to write my decision rule. Same hypothesis just that you know. Decision rule is what? reject you have to write all these it's not if f critical is less than f value we reject if this falls here no? so this is the f computer f value right this is the critical value. Our decision is what? What is our F critical? 5.14. What is our F value? 0 0.1619. Is this happening? No. So we do not have enough evidence to reject it's not with you always have to give the significance level five percent level of significance that is our decision then we have to write the conclusion in plain language what is the conclusion we do not reject it's not what was our it's not Model is adequate, so that means we accepted our it's not. 
we do not reject means we accept it so simply we can say the fitted model the fitted model is adequate this is enough or you can write the fitted model is good it's good you don't have to go for another fit it's a good fit just uh, write in terms of how they ask the question so there's no lack of fit this, this implies there is no lack of fit. Although there are repeated observations, there is no lack of fit. Model is adequate. The fitted value is the fitted model is acceptable. You can take a screenshot of this. So here our question says, determine whether or not there is lack of fit of a regression function. So if you don't write to write in terms of adequacy, you can write there, there exists no lack of fit, or you can say um, the regression function that we fitted has no lack of fit. It fits well. Lack means you are lacking something means what? You lack something, right? You, you lack you uh, have to have something more for the best fit. You lack means you uh, have a little, right? It's not enough. Lack means it's not enough, right? So there is a lack of fit means the fit is not enough. The fit and regression function is not enough to fit the true observations, right? Lack of fit means that you are lacking the fit here, what we got was the model is adequate. That means there's no lack of fit. You can write in whatever the words you want. Just keep it in plain language. That's the requirement. You can repeat the question again. There's no lack of fit of the considered regression line of this example. Right. So usually these questions be like they obtain the annual table with lack of fit. And then you have to test the hypothesis. Okay, so this is the end of today's lecture. Thank you very much for participating. And uh, I hope you uh, understood at least up to some extent. If you have questions, you can stay and ask. Otherwise, you can leave the meeting. Uh, thank you very much. Stay safe.